Chica Boom Boom by Bill Martin Jr. and John Archambault. Illustrated by Lois Ellert. A told B and B told C, I'll meet you at the top of the coconut tree. Wee said D to EFG, I'll beat you to the top of the coconut tree. Chica chica boom boom, will there be enough room? Here comes H up the coconut tree. And I and J and tag along K, all on their way up the coconut tree. Chica chica boom boom, will there be enough room? Look who's coming, L M N O P. And Q R S. And T U V. Still more, W and X Y Z. The whole alphabet up the Ono. Chica chica boom boom. Skit skat, skuddle doot, flip flop flee. Everybody running to the coconut tree. Mamas and papas and uncles and aunts hug their little dears, then dust their pants. Help us up! cried ABC. Next, from the pile up, skin knee D. And stop toe E and patch stop F. Then comes G all out of breath. <sighs> H is tangled up with I. J and K are about to cry. L is knotted like a tie. M is looped. N is stooped, O is twisted, alley oop, skit skat, school doot, flip flop lee. Look who's coming! It's Black Eyed P, Q R S, and loose to stee. Then U V W, wriggle jiggle free. Last to come X Y Z, and the sun goes down on the coconut tree. But chica chica boom boom, look, there's a full moon. A is out of bed, and this is what he said: "Dare, double dare, you can catch me. I'll beat you to the top of the coconut tree." Chica, chica, boom, boom. <sighs> Creepy carrots. Words: Aaron Reynolds. Pictures: Peter Brown. Jasper Rabbit had a passion for carrots, and the carrots that grew in Kraken Hopper Field were the best. Fat, crisp, and free for the taking. He pulled some for a morning snack on the way to school. He yanked out a few on his way to little league practice. He ripped them from the ground on his way home at night. Jasper couldn't get enough carrots. <laughs> Until they started following him. 
He first noticed something strange after the big game against the East Valley Hares. Jasper was about to help himself to a victory snack when he heard it. The soft, sinister tunk, tunk, tunk of carrots creeping. Ooh. He turned, but there was nothing there. Just my imagination, he thought, but he hoped a little faster. <laughs> that night, as he was brushing his teeth, there they were! Oh! Jasper whipped around. But nothing. He laughed at himself, picked his toothbrush off the floor, and went to bed quickly. <laughs> the next morning, he approached Kraken Hopper Field slowly. Do 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 do. He reached for two wild carrots. Nothing happened. He bit into one. Nothing happened. Ew! Creepy carrots. It was ridiculous. <laughs> but when he arrived home that evening, Mom! Mom! Jasper screamed, Creepy carrots in the shed! Ah! His mom opened the door slowly. There weren't any carrots, not even the regular kind. There are no such things as creepy carrots, mom said, shaking her head. Later that night, as Jasper lay in bed, he heard it, breathing. Terrible, carroty breathing. And there, on his wall, <gasps> ah! Creepy carrots! He shouted, Dad! Dad! His dad thumped into his bedroom and threw on the light. They searched under the bed. No creepy carrots. They looked through the closet. No creepy carrots. They opened the dresser drawers. No creepy carrots. Carrots. No creepy carrots. Just a bad dream, son, his dad said, shaking his head. Now go to sleep. That wasn't going to happen. <laughs> By the end of the week, Jasper was seeing. Creepy carrots creeping everywhere. Jasper knew his parents were wrong. Creepy carrots were real and they were coming for him. Oh. But they couldn't get him if they couldn't get out. Oh. Jasper hatched a plan. First thing on Saturday, he grabbed supplies and headed to Kraken Hopper Field.
as the sun finally set across Kraken Hopper Field, Jasper Rabbit smiled. Mm. On his way home, there was no tunk, tunk, tunk. There were no carrot-shaped shadows. His plan had worked. No creepy carrots would ever get out of that carrot patch again. And as the sun finally set, the carrots of Kraken Hopper Field. Cheered! Do no no no! Party! Yay! Woohoo! Their creepy plan had worked. They were sure of it. Jasper Rabbit would never get into that carrot patch ever again. Room on the Broom Julia Donaldson, Alex Scheffler The witch had a cat and a very tall hat and long ginger hair which she wore in a plate. How the cat purred and how the witch grinned as they sat on their broomstick and flew through the wind. But how the witch wailed and how the cat spat when the wind blew so wildly, it blew off the hat. Down! cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the hat, but no hat could be found. Then out of the bushes and thundering paws, there bounded a dog with the hat in his jaws. He dropped it politely, then eagerly said, as the witch put the hat firmly down on her head, I'm a dog as keen as can be. Is there room on the broom for a dog like me? Yes, cried the witch, and the dog clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the fields and the forest they flew. The dog wagged his tail and the stormy wind blew. The witch laughed aloud and held on to her head. But away blew the bow from her long ginger plate. Down! cried the witch and they flew to the ground. They searched for the bow but no bow could be found. Then out from a tree with an ear-splitting shriek, there fled a green bird with the bow in her beak. She dropped it politely and bent her head low, then said as the witch tied her plate in a bow, I'm a bird as green as can be. Is there room on the broom for a bird like me? Yes, cried the witch, so the bird fluttered on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the reeds and the rivers they flew, the birds shrieked with glee and the stormy wind blew. They shot through the sky to the back of beyond. The witch clutched her bow but let go of her wand. Down, cried the witch and they flew to the ground. They searched for the wand, but no wand could be found. Then all of a sudden, from out of a pond, leaped a dripping wet frog with a dripping wet wand. He dropped it politely, then said with a crock, as the witch dried her wand on the fall of her clock. I'm a frog as clean as can be. Is there room on the broom for a frog like me? Hmm? Yes, said the witch. So the frog bounded on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the moors and the mountains they flew. The frog jumped with joy and... The broom snapped in two. Down fell the cat and the dog and the frog. Down they went tumbling into a bog. 
The witches have broomstick flew into a cloud, and the witch heard a roar that was scary and loud. I'm a dragon, as mean as can be, and I'm planning to have witch and chips for my tea. No! cried the witch, flying higher and higher. The dragon flew after her, breathing out fire. No! cried the witch. Flying down to the ground, she looked all around, but no help could be found. The dragon drew near, and licking his lips, said, "Maybe this once I'll have a witch without chips." But just as he planned to begin on his feast, from out of a ditch rose a horrible beast. It was tall, dark and sticky, and feathered and fur. It had four frightful heads. It had wings like a bird, and its terrible voice, when it started to speak, was a yowl and a growl and a croak and a shriek. It dripped and it squawked as it strode from the ditch, and it said to the dragon, "Buzz off! That's my witch." The dragon drew back, and he started to shake. I'm sorry, he spluttered. I made a mistake. It's nice to have met you, but now I must fly. And he spread out his wings and was off through the sky. Then down flew the bird, and down jumped the frog. Down climbed the cat, and phew, said the dog. And thank you, oh thank you! The grateful witch cried. Without you, I'd be in the dragon's inside. Then she filled up her cauldron, and said with a grin, "Find something, everyone! Throw something in!" So the frog found a lily, the cat found a corn, the bird found a twig, and the dog found a bone. <laughs> They threw them all in, and the witch steered them well. And while she was steering, she muttered a spell: "Iggy ziggy zaggy zoom." Then out rose a truly magnificent broom. Was seized for the witch and the cat and the dog, and as for the bird, and a shower for the frog. Yes," cried the witch, as they all clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. Pete the cat and his four groovy buttons, created and illustrated by James Dean. Story by Eric Litwin. Pete the cat put on his favorite shirt with four big, colorful, round, groovy buttons. He loved his buttons so much he sang this song. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. My. Oh no! One of the buttons popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Three. Four minus one equals three. Three groovy. Did Pete cry? Goodness no! 
buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons, my buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons, my buttons. Oh no! Another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Three minus one equals two. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no! Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. Another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? One, two minus one equals one. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My button, my button, my one groovy button. My button, my button, my one groovy button. Button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Zero. One minus one equals zero. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. Pete looked down at his buttonless shirt, and what do you think he saw? Huh? His belly button, and he kept on singing his song. It's all good. My button, my button, still have my belly button. My button, my button, still have my belly button. I guess it simply goes to show that stuff will come and stuff will go. But do we cry? Goodness, no! We keep on singing. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. Buttons come and buttons go. Stickman, Julia Donaldson, Axel Scheffler by the best-selling creators of Room on the Broom. Stick Man lives in the family tree with his stick lady love and their stick children three. One day he wakes early and goes for a jog. Stick Man, oh Stick Man, beware of the dog! <coughs> A stick box, the dog, an excellent stick, the right kind of stick for my favorite trick. I'll fetch it and drop it and fetch it and then I'll drop it and fetch it and drop it again. I'm not a stick, why can't you see? I'm stick man, I'm stick man, I'm stick man, that's me. And I want to go home to the family tree. 
A note says, Dogs must be kept on the lead. At last the game's over and Stickman is freed. He sets off for home with, with a hop and a twirl. Stickman, oh Stickman, beware of the girl. A stick, cries the girl with a smile on her face. I bet you the stick will come first in the race. Has everyone got one? Get ready to throw. It's one, two, three, into the river they go. I'm not a stick, why can't they see? I'm Stickman, I'm Stickman, I'm Stickman, that's me. And I'm heading away from the family tree. Stickman is floating, he floats on and on. Stickman, oh Stickman, beware of the swan. A twig, says the swamp. This twig is the best. Is the right kind of twig to weave into my nest. I'm not a twig, why can't they see? I'm Stickman, I'm Stickman, I'm Stickman, that's me. And I long to be back in the family tree. The nest is deserted and Stickman is free. He drifts down the river and sails out to sea. He tosses and turns till the frolicking foam washes him up on the beach far from home. Here comes a dad with a spade in his hand. Stick man, no oh stick man, beware of the sand. A mast, yells the dad, an excellent mast. Hooray, there's a flag on our castle at last. I'm not a mast for a silly old flag, or a sword for a knight, or a hook for a bag. I'm not a pen, I'm not a bow, I'm not a bat, or a boomerang. No, I'm... Steak man, oh steak man, beware of the snow. Here comes a boy in a warm woolly scarf, an arm for my snowman, he says with a laugh. I'm not an arm, can nobody see? I'm Stickman, I'm Stickman, I'm Stickman, that's me. Will I ever get back to the family tree? Stickman is lonely, Stickman is lost, Stickman is frozen and covered in frost. Stickman is weary, his eyes start to close, he stretches and yawns and lies down for a doze. He can't hear bells or the sweet singing chore. Or the voice saying, here's a good stick for the fire. Stickman is laying asleep in the grate. Can anyone wake him before it's too late? He dreams of his kids and his stick lady love. Then Sally wakes. What's that noise up above? It starts as a chuckle that turns to a shout. Ho, 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 I'm stuck, get me out. A stuckman? A stuckman? Now who could that be? Don't worry, cries Stickman. I'll soon set you free. A scratch and a scrape and a flurry of soot. A wiggle, a juggle, and out pokes a foot. A shove and a nudge and a hop and a jump. <laughs> and Santa falls into the room with a thump. Stickman, oh Stickman, you excellent friend. Thanks, thanks a million. Thanks without end. Then Stickman helps Santa deliver the toys to fast asleep girls and to fast asleep boys. Faster and faster they fly through the snow till Santa says, only one chimney to go. Stick ladies lonely, the children are sad. It won't feel like Christmas without their stick dad. They toss and turn in the family bed. But what is that clattering sound overhead? 
someone is tumbling into their house. Is it a bird or a bat or a mouse? Or could it be yes? Could it just possibly be? I'm Stickman, I'm Stickman, I'm Stickman, that's me! And I'm sticking right here in the family tree. Ho ho ho! Merry Christmas, everyone! Houghton. Look, a bird. Hello, birdie. Shh, shh. We have fun. Keep go slowly. Keep go slowly. Now stop. Shh. Ready one. Ready two. Ready three. Look, up there. Hello, birdie. We have a plan. Climbing slowly, climbing slowly. Now stop. Ready one, ready two, ready three. Now stop. Shh. Ready one, ready two, ready three. Go! Hello, birdie. Would you like some bread? One. Ready one, ready two, ready <laughs> Run away! <laughs> Look, a squirrel. Creepy pair of underwear. Ooh. Words Aaron Reynolds. Pictures Peter Brown. Jasper Rabbit needed new underwear. On Thursday, Mom took him to the underwear store and grabbed the last three packages of plain white. But as they headed for the checkout, Jasper spotted them. Creepy underwear. So creepy, so comfy. They were glorious. Mom! Mom, can we get these? Jasper pleaded. I think they're a little too creepy, said Mom. They're not creepy, they're cool, said Jasper. I'm not a little bunny anymore, I'm a big rabbit now. Mom agreed to buy one pair. That night, Jasper wore his cool new underwear to bed. Do you want me to leave the hallway light on? Asked Dad. Dad, I'm not a little bunny anymore, said Jasper. I'm a big rabbit now. 
His dad shut the door, and that's when Jasper noticed. The underwear glowed, a ghoulish, greenish glow. Ooh, wow. He closed his eyes, he pulled up the covers, he buried his face in his pillow, but it didn't help. He could still see that ghoulish, greenish glow. Ooh. Jasper leaped out of bed and put on a pair of plain white. He stuffed the creepy underwear into the bottom of his laundry hamper. He finally fell asleep. <sighs> <sighs> but when he got up the next day, he was wearing the creepy underwear. Ah! Jasper threw them into the garbage can. He was still a big rabbit. He wasn't scared or anything, but he was done with scary underwear. Hmm? After school, Jasper was doing his homework when he heard a scratchy, scraping sound coming from his dresser. He opened the drawer and... They were back, staring at him with that ghoulish, greenish glow. <laughs> He snatched the creepy underwear out of the drawer. He grabbed a big envelope and some stamps. To China! Bye-bye, scary underwear, he said, dropping the package in the mailbox. When he opened the front door the next morning, there they were. And were those chopsticks? His creepy pair of underwear had somehow returned from China and it had brought back souvenirs. <laughs> Jasper grabbed his mom's good sewing scissors. She didn't like him using them, but this was an underwear emergency. Mm. <laughs> this time, the creepy underwear were gone for good. <gasps> At bedtime, he slowly opened his underwear drawer. Nothing, just plain white undies. He searched under his bed. He shook out his lampshade. Phew! There was no sign of creepy underwear. <laughs> he went into the bathroom to comb his ears. They were back! They were back! What is the matter with you? His mom asked, You're so jittery lately. Nothing! He yelped. A grown rabbit couldn't be terrified of his underpants. He seized the underwear. He snagged a shovel from the garage and he rode. He didn't stop pedaling until he reached Creek Hanger Hill. Jasper began to dig. He dug until his hole was dark and deep and 100% underwear proof. He dropped the underwear in. They gleamed from the bottom, that ghoulish greenish glow. But not for long! Yay! When he got home, Jasper crept up to his dresser. 
They couldn't be in there. There was no way, right? Mm -hmm. He reached for the handle. He peeked in. Nothing, just plain white. Jasper smiled and turned out the light. was just one problem. It was really dark in there. Even for a big rabbit. Jasper turned on the light. He looked at his non-glowy pair of plain white. And he knew what he had to do. Hmm. Dun. The creepy underwear were a little muddy, but they still filled the room with a gentle greenish glow. The next day, Jasper gathered his allowance money and went to the underwear store all by himself, just like a big rabbit. That night Jasper wasn't scared at all. As he lay down to sleep, he smiled. And so did his underwear, because they had finally found somebody who wasn't scared of creepy underwear. Ooh. Sheepy. Oh. By Lucy Ruth Cummins, illustrated by Pete Oswald. Sleepy Sheepy was not sleepy. Mm. Yum yum. Oh la la. But it was time for bed. At least that's what the clock said. Yay! <sighs> time for bed, my little cotton ball. Let's hit the hay one and all. But sleepy sheepy... Was not... Sleepy! La la la! Mmm! Not one more peep, my little sheep. You fluffed enough, Mr. Puff. Off we go! But sleepy sheepy, now quite weepy. <laughs> Was not Sleepy! In fact, Sleepy Sheepy was... <gasps> wide awake! <clears throat> sleepy Sheepy would not Sleepy. He was wired and absolutely not tired. So, instead of bed, he boot with blocks, knitted socks, and spama and pa sheepy quite a yarn. And just then, sleepy sheepy yawned. <gasps> See, said Ma Sheepy. There, said Pa Sheepy. So then they trotted softly, hoof and hoof and hoof, to a snuggly woggly big boy bed. But Sleepy Sheepy... <coughs> was 
was still not sleepy. <gasps> it was time for a nighttime snack, but his eyelids drooped, his shoulders stooped, his brain was pooped. Maybe, said Sleepy Sheepy quite sheepishly, I'm a little bit tired. So Sleepy Sheepy got under the cozy covers. Ma Sheepy gave Sleepy Sheepy a kiss on his fluffy forehead. Pa Sheepy tucked his covers in quite tight, which felt just right. And by the time they turned out the light... Sleepy Sheepy was fast asleep. Hmm. Thank you for watching. Subscribe.